Corey Falls, and I'm running for Johnson County Sheriff. Thank you all for being here today. I grew up in Rouge. Anybody from Rouge? <laughs> all right, all right. Don't hold it against me yet. I grew up in Rouge, and I've lived in uh, uh, Jackson County for a large portion of, of my life. And uh, prior to going to college, I worked on a dairy farm out in the Applegate for a year. So I understand uh, living in a rural area and understand that law enforcement in a rural area, the sheriff's office, is, is, is it. Uh, I have a, in my 16 years in law enforcement, I've built a strong foundation of police leadership and uh, police training. And currently I'm the deputy chief of police for the Ashland Police Department. In that capacity as deputy chief, I've overseen uh, every division of our police department to include our patrol, our detectives, and our non-sworn staff. I started my law enforcement career in the state of Washington uh, after I graduated from the University of Montana. And uh, while in Washington, I had the opportunity to work for the Snohomish, work for Snohomish County, which is the third largest sheriff's office in Washington. So once again, I, I understand county, county policing. And while I was in Washington, I uh, was also a NRA, NRA firearms instructor. So I'm, I'm a supporter of firearms and, and guns. Uh, I've always tried to balance my education with my law enforcement experience. And I, uh, after getting a bachelor's degree, I uh, went back to school and I got a master's degree in organizational management. And currently I'm working on my doctorate degree in business administration and hopefully I'll finish that within the next year. I also have a criminal justice certificate in, uh, in, or a graduate certificate in criminal justice and education. So that's a little bit about uh, my, my law enforcement and my, my experience. I, I call that my, that's my foundation that I've built. I've, I've built a strong foundation in police leadership and, and training. and. With that foundation and my commitment to Jackson County, I feel very prepared to lead Jackson County Sheriff's Office into the future. Some of the things I would like to see as uh, priorities for, that would be my priorities as Jackson County Sheriff is one, I, I believe it's the responsibility of all sworn police officers or a sheriff or chief or whatever to protect citizens' constitutional and civil rights. And, and, and certainly that would, be, that would be a priority of mine. Open communication. Uh, with the public would be a, a big priority of mine. A lot of times when we see problems in our, in our leadership, government, whatever it is, you can look to a, a lack of communication sometimes to see a breakdown in that. Some professional pre-policing strategies uh, I would implement. I've been part of implementing best practices and pro professional uh, policing strategies to identify problems within the, within the community that are important to you guys to where we're spending the resources, the money that you give us to the problems that you want us to enforce. Uh, so those would be some of my priorities. I have a couple of short-term goals and long-term solutions I'd like to see for Jackson County. Short-term goals are one, just how, what are we doing with, with the resources you're giving us? What are we accomplishing that? And, and identifying those things. So how fast are we getting to calls? Is crime going down? And uh, thank you, my, my time's up. Okay. <laughs> My wife Teresa, she's back there wearing black. Uh, my greatest supporter. Uh, I've been in the in the valley since since '89. I've uh, been a cop for 34 years, and, and I've probably done most everything in a law enforcement agency. But so the real issue I want to talk about is um, where this agency needs to go. Uh, I want to talk about leadership, fiscal responsibility, and uh, a little bit about myself and the endorsements I get and why um, I think I'd be the next sheriff. Um, leadership. To, to have leadership, it takes trust from your employees. Uh, recently, the, the vote for, from the association gave me 52% of their endorsement, gave Corey 29%, gave Mike 4%. I think that says a lot about who they want to see uh, be their leader. I've, uh, they, they know me, they trust me, they respect my, uh, my supervision and my uh, uh, ideas and plans. Uh, fiscal responsibility. It's been said a number of times that this agency wastes a lot of money on unnecessary uh, equipment and services. Uh, the, the Antares is a, is a million and a half. The Nexar System Shady Cove is is 150,000 uh, litigation. We've we've probably spent in the last three years uh, close to a million dollars on litigation. Uh, 
300,000 just on uh, two years ago on, on a loss. Uh, the original charge was the uh, false termination, but we ended up paying about $205,000 to this guy to sue, sue the sheriff's office. And then I want to talk about the endorsements and, and who endorses me. I'm overwhelmingly supported by the law enforcement community. Uh, former Sheriff Bob Kennedy endorses me. Uh, a number of uh, retired and, uh, and uh, prominent law enforcement people in this, in this area endorse me. I've got backing of former prosecutors. There's a whole host of people that endorse me. The association endorses me. Uh, they want to see this agency uh, move in a different direction. I have a plan to do that. I, can, I know this agency. I can do that from day one. Uh, I can put more uh, deputies on the street and not cost the budget a dime. So uh, appreciate your support, man. Okay, Well, I'm Mike Winters. I am your current sitting sheriff. Uh, I've been doing this since, since 2003. Uh, and I, I think you should look at things as an investment. Uh, I, I do want to see at some point the endorsement from the association because as last I heard they hadn't endorsed anyone. And, and to touch on your point, uh, Deputy Chief, the, the crime categories, most of them in Jackson County have gone down. The things that I want to touch on is that uh, I volunteered, worked at, kind of started out as a volunteer with the Jackson County Fire District 5, and then I was a reserve officer over at the city of Ashland. I moved into the Oregon State Police. I was there for about 14 years, and then in 2002 ran for Jackson County Sheriff, and I was blessed that uh, through everyone's support I was able to attain that goal. Since then, uh, in the tough economic times that we've had, and, and you all live them day to day because uh, we have a ranch outside of Ashland and I know that we live it day to day trying to make the ends meet. Uh, I brought that budget in on budget or underspent it for 12 years in a row and haven't come back and ask you for one penny of support. No law enforcement levies, no additional taxes, and I, I want you to know what you're getting for your money, what, you, what that investment's been. In, that, in this period of time, we have uh, taken the 911 center that was on top of 10 South Oakdale, the old courthouse, we built a new center out at the airport that is earthquake ready and consolidated all the communications in Southern Oregon. So, so except for this Oregon State Police and ODOT, and they're actually looking right, <coughs> they were down here today to look at that co-location in that center. The space that the Sheriff's Office was in before uh, was small. It was below the jail. Uh, the inmates would stuff towels and sheets down the sewer system, and then the urine would rain in on the on the workspace. So uh, we have a building that we've moved out that's earthquake uh, retrofitted out at uh, 62 in Vilas. That's where 66% of our calls are from the north end. So it gets us out of the space down, downtown, it puts us out where most of the calls are, and gives us good highway access so we can get to those calls. And to touch on your point, our average response time is 14 minutes or less to a priority one call. The homicide out on Pioneer Road that you're seeing on TV, we were on scene in 11 minutes. That's pretty good for the sheriff's office, uh, you know, that has the staff that we have. What have you got for your investment over the last few years? The next our system that uh, <coughs> Lieutenant Sergi touched on, uh, we took $200,000 worth of drug money and we put that system in out there to protect our kids. They're getting slaughtered day in and day out and we have to stop it. And I'm gonna do something about it. And I'm not gonna back off of that. If we get more drug money, I'm gonna find another school to do. Because they're getting killed day in and day out and we have to stop it. Okay. The traffic. Uh, you're, you're out of time. Okay. <laughs> Two minutes to rebut or say whatever you want, and then we'll ask you some questions. Okay, just real quickly about uh, any of the endorsements. It's my understanding that the sheriff's office hasn't endorsed anybody, that the police department hasn't endorsed anybody. So I, we don't know who, who law enforcement supports. There's only one agency that supported anybody, and that's the Ashland Police Department, and they've supported me. You know, to go against a three-term incumbent, 
if, if you're not going to go vote against a three-term examiner, you're going to want somebody that's, that's different. So I just want to talk about how I've prepared for this position. And I've prepared for this position for the last six years in a management position. So if you want somebody that can hit the ground running, I've served as an acting chief in the chief staff since I've ran every division of the police department. I've done budget. I've done our budget presentation to our budget committee. I've uh, done our budget narrative. I've done contract negotiations. I've implemented programs within our police department to reduce uh, problems with, within our organization. So I've done that at the local law enforcement level. At the county level, I implemented the first crisis intervention training program in Jackson County to train police officers and deputies how to respond to someone with mental health, uh, mental illness in, in a crisis. And we did that uh, in, in 2009. I'm also part of the Medford SWAT team. So I, I've been part of almost every tactical operation that's occurred in Jack, in Jack, within the city of Medford and, and Ashland in the last uh, five years. Uh, while I was in Washington, I worked for the Snohomish Regional Drug Task Force, a county of over 600,000 people. Very, I know uh, drug investigations, so that's what I've completed on a, uh, on a county level. On a national level, I've presented uh, to a congressional panel uh, the, of the Department of Defense on our sexual assault program. I've been to the Federal Bureau of Investigations National Academy, where they train executives on how to run police organizations. I was invited to the National Institutes on Violence Against Women to run best practices on how to combat sexual assault and domestic violence and in stalking. And I was also invited back to uh, Quantico, Virginia to teach in their youth leadership program uh, to teach kids in leadership from all around the country. So these are some of the things that I've done. I've been, I've been preparing for this position for the last six years, and I appreciate your support. Thank you. The Sheriff's Office is, is not on a good track. Bottom line, the, the, the deputies, uh, they, they've lost respect for the administration, they lost the trust. There's a lot of things that have gone on in the last uh, six or seven years that has eroded that trust so bad that uh, um, for them to give him 4% of the vote is is basically a vote of no confidence. The, the plan I have for the Sheriff's Office, I, I, I can develop a plan, and I do have a plan, and the reason I can do that is because I know this agency. I know the personnel, I know the, the, the jail, I know the patrol, I know detectives, and I know where, where, where needed, the needed personnel need to go. I, I know how to uh, use the budget within means. Um, Although uh, Mike says that we've never gone over budget, the, the new sheriff's uh, facility, that was almost $900,000 over budget. Uh, uh, like I said before, wasted resources on stuff that are not essential or services that are, are not needed. We have a, a $225,000 piece of equipment out there that uh, it's on a, on a private helicopter, and we have not used that in, in several years. Those are the type of things that we need to uh, stop, and, and, I, and I have a plan to do that. Uh, it's when Mike says we're on the right track, we're going in the right direction, that is, is not true. We need a new direction. Law enforcement needs to be, be the priority, and I have a plan to put that back in place. You gotta roll the, peop the people out your plan, Bob. Uh, I want to get back on point. The traffic team, we've started uh, reduced traffic fatalities in Jackson County by 50%. That started in 04. We didn't have a SWAT unit. We started a SWAT unit, a canine unit, a child is missing, a community service officer program. We started online reporting for civilians. We have a cold case homicide squad. We have an air rescue unit, which was in the city of Ashland Thursday and rescued two 15-year-old girls within 20 minutes after being launched one of which wouldn't be with us today, uh, probably. It was, it was very close, another hour, she would have been in severe trouble. She's in severe trouble now, but she may not have made it. Uh, we, we built the communications center. We started the CORSAR, the California Oregon Search and Rescue uh, Program, which is seven southwestern sheriffs and two in Northern California. We have a 100% fine rate. 
We have the summer program, which takes care of the Mexican cartels that are moving into our private lands and forests. You should be able to recreate and do everything out there. We've pushed them out uh, by working with nine counties on, on that. We have a regionalized Amber Alert uh, system that we're working on uh, as we speak. Had the training last week. We are partners with the Medford Area uh, Drug and Gang Task Force, the High Tech Crime Unit. Uh, and we're getting ready to open 60 additional jail beds down uh, in that space that we vacated and stuff. When you talk about uh, investment and return on your dollar, the Jackson County Sheriff's Office has done a lot with your money to keep you safe in Jackson County. cows. So that's what I do. We have a ranch outside of Ashland and, uh, and we raise cows. I don't have any outside businesses outside of law enforcement. I, I think understanding business is important. That's why I went back to school and, and got uh, more education in, in business to understand that, but I have zero outside businesses. <clears throat> I've had businesses. I, I used to own a, a catalog, you know, catalog business. I, I was a real estate agent. From 2005, I deactivated my license uh, just recently. I'm a full-time law enforcement official. Other questions? Well, since we've kind of averted the grill in the corner, Measure 15119, if it passes and there has to be enforcement, are you going to take the deputies off of the roads to get an 11-minute response to go tell me on my property rights that I have to dig up my crop? Good question, Melissa. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the enforcement part of that, uh, from my knowledge, is, is, is not part of the equation of the, um, of the measure. Um, th those would have to be administrative rules. It, it could very well fall in the sheriff's office. I'm not sure. Uh, things like uh, animal control, although part of that falls on the sheriff's office. It was originally, they had their own separate. So whether the state requires a like a business inspection or a, a land inspector or a building inspector type position to go out and do that thing. I don't know. Uh, I think that's a sixty-four thousand dollar question. Is who's going to enforce it? We could possibly have to do it, just like uh, we have to go out and investigate uh, neglected or abused horses. But uh, that would be an open-ended question. I'd have to know more about what the measure is, intent, uh, is intended to do, and who's supposed to be enforcing that? That's, that's a good question. Here's how I see that, that playing out. I wouldn't <coughs> use deputies for something like that. I think that would, with it being an administrative or a civil matter, it would be something uh, in terms of code enforcement. So a, a code enforcement officer could, could certainly look into some of those uh, problems uh, or, or go to the, some of those calls. So we wouldn't be taking a deputy to, to, to take away from patrolling to uh, criminal in progress crimes or crimes against people or crimes against property. We wouldn't use it on, on that. So that's where I would see uh, it being used as more in a code enforcement type of enforcement. And, uh, and then that would just be a, a, a prior, you know, to prioritize uh, when they get out there. And to accurately answer the question, I have to research the statute, see what the final draft's going to be when it's passed, and then I'll, I would be able to tell you exactly uh, how any of that would be enforced by what organization would be enforced by. All right here. Go ahead, Dave. <clears throat> At one time, the Sheriff's Department had an MOU, a Memorandum of Understanding with the BLM, for law enforcement on BLM managed land is, I have several parts to my question. Is that memorandum of understanding still in force and effect? And what role does each of the agencies that are signatories to that have a role to play in law enforcement 
in this county, which has over 50% of its land in federal ownership? I'll answer that first. Um, we do have a BLM contract, and currently we have a deputy assigned to that. And we have two seasonal workers in the summer that come in, and their duties are essentially um, forest protection, making sure uh, people aren't dumping illegal wood cutting, and anything else that goes on in, within those BLM uh, jurisdictions. So they're the law enforcement. They it's a they aid the BLM and U.S. Forest Services, and it, it's something that it's it's a great service that we do, and, and we do get revenue for that. And the seasonal workers, they they patrol the back roads, make sure uh, they have a presence out there, and they are also uh, reimbursed by billing. So with the, with the BLM and, and that M MOU, they've, they've done a lot, of, I know, in the Ashland Watershed with, with partnering together and cleaning up homeless camps and, and those kind of things. I think the, where you have to watch with the what the concern is a lot of times with the relationship with the BLM and and local law enforcement is you know is the federal government going to impose themselves and in, in you're partnering with them and what will we do to stand up for that? So certainly with any type of relationship, whether it was with BLM, the DEA, FBI, we're, we are the the last you know, the, with local law enforcement or the sheriff who's the chief law enforcement executive of the of the county. Uh, certainly if if the federal government comes in to impose themselves, then we need to make sure that, uh, that they're staying within the Constitution and the, and the values of our community. I think the question's pretty well been answered. The bottom line is that uh, everything they said is accurate, and uh, at the end of the day, I'm their boss. If there starts to be any kind of issue uh, relationship-wise or uh, you know, federal intrusion, people stepping out of line and stuff, at the end of the day, they work for me, I terminate the Right now, it serves as well that BLM pays uh, those deputies to be out in those outlying areas and out in the forest and trying to keep the trash and, and all the different uh, things, fires, everything under control so that, uh, you know, it's, it's just a, it's a revenue stream that hasn't had a negative effect on us at this time. All right. What's been the percentage of the... Uh Sheriff's Department increase in the last uh, five years on your budget. What percentage has your budget gone up in the last five years? Well, actually, our budget, is, our number of manpower has gone from one, 180. I'm talking about the dollars. Thank you. Well, I'd have to pull, go back five years and calculate it. I know we've lost 20 people, so. I think part of that, Jim, is that uh, it hasn't increased much. Um, we're still between twenty-five and thirty thousand over the last four or five years, so it, it, it hasn't increased much, and certainly not. Uh, uh, it hasn't been a big impact uh, as far as increasing on the on the county, but uh, we're, we're pretty much status quo for, for a while. In 2009, 2010, it was 26,249 with 183 sworn personnel, or excuse me, 103 personnel. 2010, 2011, it was 28,142 with 183 personnel. 2011, 2012, it went down to 27,500 with 183 personnel. Uh, 2012, 2013, it was at uh, 29 million with 183 personnel, and last year's was at 20. Million eight hundred and eighteen thousand, but they lost twenty people, down to one hundred sixty-one percent. Okay, uh, I'd like to thank you guys. We appreciate it. <laughs> Hope all the candidates uh, stay around to answer questions after the meeting. I do have a couple of things I have to do. Uh, number one, uh, the minutes. Do, do we have a motion to dispense with the minutes?